Starting a new series where I sort of, I'm going to call it the quick test yourself series where I go through five multi-choice questions for each chapter of the biology syllabus. Most MCQs are taken directly from past papers but there are some that I have made myself as well. I recommend that at the start of each question just pause the video and arrive at an answer yourself first and then unpause for the solutions and explanations that I will go through with you. So. Without further ado, let's go through this first question. Uh, use the key to identify the insect. They really like to ask you different variants of the same type of question, which is of course just using uh, dichotomous keys to arrive at an answer. Uh, so you take a look at the diagram here of this insect and you go through each of these steps starting from number one. So you determine first of all whether there are wings present or whether the wings are absent. We know that uh, this particular insect does have wings, so we must go to step two. Step two is about determining whether there are two pairs of wings or simply one pair of wings. Well, we know that there are two wings on each side of this insect, so therefore there are two pairs. And so step two therefore allows us to determine um, ourselves to go towards step three. So step three, lastly, is about determining whether there are dots on the wings or no dots on the wings. Well, we can physically see that there are dots that are scattered throughout the surface of the wing on this particular insect, so therefore we arrive at the answer C. Uh, systems of classifications show ancestral relationships between organisms. What is the most accurate system of classification? And so this question uh, is testing your knowledge of how uh, back in the olden days, uh, I suppose before science really developed and equipment n was never present, uh, the the idea that we used to classify organisms, uh, specifically regarding ancestral relationships, based on what the organisms appeared like. So if two organisms look like each other or look similar with similar features, uh, we would sort of uh, suggest that those two organisms shared uh, a particular ancestor or they were close within the ancestral relationships amongst each other. So that is basically determining ancestral relationships with morphology and anatomy. Um, but now we know that the best and most accurate way of classifying an organism is to look at the DNA base sequences of the cells of those particular organisms. The closer the DNA base sequences are, the closer they are within the ancestral sort of uh, ancestral history of, of, of relationships. And so the answer here would definitely be B. So the third question, uh, some yeast, sugar and water are mixed in a test tube. The diagrams show the results. Which process explains this change? A. Growth, B. Reproduction, C. Respiration, and D. Sensitivity. Uh, so if you take a look at this question, the idea is that uh, the results show that there are gas bubbles there that are being formed. So all you need to know is out of all these four options of life processes, which one is the one that causes gas to be produced? We know that for a fact that respiration, when it does happen, carbon dioxide, which is a gas, gets produced as a byproduct. And so therefore, the answer has to be respiration because none, none of the other answers really make sense. So that would have been a very easy one there. So the scientific name of a bird is Falco peregrinus, if I've pronounced that correctly. To which species does it belong? So, you know, ignore my pronunciation, but uh, this question of course is testing your knowledge of the simple binomial classification system where the first part of the name is the genus and the second part of the name is species. So that should make it very obvious. Uh, the answer is A, bird, B, F, peregrinus, C, falco, and D, vertebrae. Uh, we know A and D are not anything to do with species, uh, so really it's between B and C. Uh, according to the binomial system, we know that falco must be the genus uh, and therefore B is the species. So the answer was B. And the last question here, a section of DNA sequence from a chimpanzee is as follows, A, G, C, 
T-A-C-A-G-A-N-G, which DNA section is from an organism most closely related to the chimpanzee. So you've got different options here going from A, B, C, and D. Uh, this sort of uh, ties into what we were talking about before, how the, the closer or more similar the DNA base sequences are amongst different organisms, uh, the closer they are, uh, the closer relationship they have. So if you take a look at all of these different answers, you just need to pick a part and choose the one that is most similar to the example that they gave us before, which is the DNA sequence from a chimpanzee. Um, so you'll quickly arrive at the solution that A is the most similar. The only difference is between A and the example they gave us before of the chimpanzee is that the G is swapped out to a T. Right, that's the only difference. Everything else looks the same. However, in the other options, there are at least two or more differences in the DNA sequences. So we arrive at the conclusion that A, uh, organism A, is the most closely related to the chimpanzee as a result. Okay, so I hope you uh, learned something from this, guys. Um, I hope all of you guys got all five correct. And uh, now we only went through five questions, but I have at least 20 MCQ flashcards for each topic. And this you know, website, Quizlet, is amazing because you can download a mobile app, which is really, really seamless, and it allows you to revise anywhere you want. Uh, there's approximately 500 flashcards in total, and it took me a long time to compile these. If you want access to all of them, just simply join Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Um, otherwise, I will uh, continue the series and go through all the different other uh, questions as well, or at least pick apart five from each topic and go through those, and um, hopefully it just uh, adds on to a bit of your revision as well. So um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys.